Thank you, Director. Welcome, everybody. Sorry for the uh, technical glitch, but we're back online. And to remind everybody, we are uh, live and being recorded this evening, uh, the meeting for October 24, 2023, at 5 p.m. I'd like to also acknowledge the Rainbow District School Board would like to acknowledge that we are on the traditional and ancestral territory of the Anishinaabek, including An Antigamishing and Anishinaabek Wanapate Nations. We would like to acknowledge that we are situated within the Huron Huron Robinson Huron Treaty of 1850 and want to recognize the inherent rights of the Anishinaabek that maintain these lands from time immemorial. Roll call, Director. Trustee Dubosky. Present. Trustee Farrell. Present. Trustee Gibson. Present. Trustee Cosmerly. Present. Trustee Dewar. Present. Trustee Hunda. Present. Trustee Corby Addison. Present. Trustee Colon. Present. Student Trustee Green. Present. Student Trustee Jack Osiwink. Is present, just for the record. Thank you, Director. Approval of the agenda. We have a motion that the agenda for the regular board meeting of October 24th, 2023 be approved. I uh, need a mover, please. Oh, one second. We have a hand up, Trustee Cosmerly. I'd like to make an amendment to, to the motion. I'd like to request that the order of business be changed. Uh, that may be done by recorded vote in accordance with uh, our governance bylaws, uh, bylaw 7.4. And what I'm requesting is that we change the order uh, to move section D, which is report from the closed meeting of the board uh, to now, um, prior to, to ahead of uh, preliminary, or, or I guess right after, right after preliminary declarations of pecuniary interest. Okay. So I'm making that as a motion that we uh, amend the order of business. Okay. Oh, here you go, second it, okay. Did we have a mover for that? No, oh, oh, it was you. <laughs> Trustee Cosmerly and a seconder, Trustee Farrell. Any questions? I see none. Full vote, Director. Trustee Clamo. In favor. Trustee Corby Addison. In favor. Trustee Dubosky. In favor. Trustee Dewar. In favor. Trustee Farrell. In favor. Trustee Gibson. Opposed. Trustee Hunda. In favor. Trustee Cosmerly. In favor. Student Trustee Green. In favor. Student Trustee Jack Osiwink. In favor. Motion's carried. Thank you, Director. B, preliminary declaration of pecuniary interests. I see none. So, with the change that we've made, the uh, report from the closed meeting of the board. Director? At this point, we have property matters. I will turn it to uh, Superintendent Gilbo. Thank you, through you, Chair Clement. Uh, we have two motions to read. I'll, uh, for your consideration, I'll read the first one. That motion number 23-W41 regarding Carl A. Nesbitt Public School property matter be approved. Mover, Trustee Cosmony. Uh, sorry, I wasn't paying attention. And uh, seconder, Trustee Lisa Corbier Addison. Any questions? Full vote, Director. Trustee Clement. In favor. Trustee Corbier Addison. In favor. Trustee Dubosky. In favor. Trustee Dewar. In favor. Trustee Farrell. In favor. Trustee Gibson. In favor. Trustee Hunda. In favor. Trustee Cosmerly. In favor. Student Trustee Green. In favor. Student Trustee Jack Osiwink. In favor. Motion's carried. Thank you, Director. Superintendent Gilbo. Okay. Thank you, Chair Clement. Through you. The second motion reads that motion number 23 W42 
regarding Ernie Checker's public school property matter be approved. I need a mover, please. Uh, Trustee DeBosky, a seconder. Trustee, <laughs> Trustee Farrell. Any questions? Poll vote director. Trustee Clement. In favor. Trustee Corbier Addison. In favor. Trustee DeBosky. In favor. Trustee Dewar. In favor. Trustee Farrell. In favor. Trustee Gibson. In favor. Trustee Hunda. In favor. Trustee Cosworthy. In favor. Student Trustee Green. In favor. Student Trustee Jack Osiwink. In favor. Motion's carried. Thank you, Director. Now we move on to number two, trustee vacancy. We have a motion that Alex McCauley be appointed trustee with the Rainbow District School Board for the remainder of 2022-2026 term. I need a mover, please. Trustee Farrell, a seconder, please. Trustee Doreen Dewar. Any questions? I see none. Poll vote director. Trustee Clement. In favor. Trustee Corby Addison. In favor. Trustee Dabosky. In favor. Trustee Dewar. In favor. Trustee Farrell. In favor. Trustee Gibson. Abstain. Trustee Honda. In favor. Trustee Cosmo. In favor. Student Trustee Green. Abstained. Student Trustee Jack Osiwink. In favor. Motion's carried. Thank you, Director. Now we have a motion that the ballots for the trustees' vacancy be destroyed. A mover, please. Trustee uh, Hunda. Uh, seconder. Trustee Cosmerly. All in favor? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, sorry. My bad. Poll vote, Director. Trustee Clement. In favor. Point of order. Chair Clement. Yes, yes, Trustee uh, Gibson. Do we have to do a poll vote for every vote that's at your request? Is that correct? It's on the agenda. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Continue on. Trustee Clement. In favor. Trustee Corbier Addison. In favor. Trustee Dabosky. In favor. Trustee Dewar. In favor. Trustee Farrell. In favor. Trustee Gibson. In favor. Trustee Honda. In favor. Trustee Cosmerly. In favor. Student Trustee Green. In favor. Student Trustee Jack Osiwink. In favor. Motion's carried. Thank you, Director. We'll take a moment.
Thank you very much. We're back in session. Uh, we go now to C presentations. Student Achievements, EQAO, and OSSLTs. Director. Thank you, Chair Clamont. I just want to take this opportunity to thank um, all the presenters that will be before you today. This is a very hardworking group of individuals who have shown tremendous system leadership in making some results uh, that we're proud to share with you tonight. Of course, as you know, uh, this is an ongoing process for us, and we are going to be very happy to share more positive results in years to come as a result of our increased focus and restructuring efforts this year. But having said that, uh, knowing that we had the challenges of moving from uh, different phases of learning and uh, moving out of pandemic mode into uh, the current uh, state we're in. Um, I'm very thankful for the leadership, not only of the team you have here today before you, but all of our staff, uh, all of our education support staff, and certainly our school administrators who have been working tirelessly to promote student achievement. So with that, I will turn it over to Superintendent Leslie Fisher to begin the presentation tonight. Good evening, everyone. Tonight, we are pleased to share with you our EQAO results for Rainbow Schools. EQAO stands for the Education Quality and Accountability Office. It is the provincial body that administers student assessments to determine how well our students are achieving curriculum expectations. Overall, Rainbow has much to celebrate. We have the top result in all English language boards, public or Catholic, in Northeastern Ontario in primary reading, writing, and math, as well as junior reading and math. So in all six categories, we are number one in five of the six categories. As always, our assessment results are used to enhance student learning we ask two important questions. How are we doing? And what can we do next to improve student learning? Joining us tonight to report our EQAO results is Student Success Lead Melanie Bertrand, Principal of Program Dan Kozier, and Principal of Special Education Programs and Services Danielle Williamson. We would welcome any questions that you may have at the end of the presentation. At this time, I would like to turn the presentation over to Principal of Program, Dan Kozier. Thank you, Superintendent Fisher. In many of the slides today, we will look at graphs comparing trends over time. It should be noted that since the EQAO assessments resumed during the 2021-22 school year, the format has changed significantly from past years. The assessment is now fully electronic and is referred to provincially as the e-assessment platform. While students did have the option to respond on paper to some questions, many questions could only be answered electronically. Along with the change of format, the content is delivered differently. Not every student received the same questions as the test is adaptive based on student input. Depending on their response to a question, the following prompts may be drawn from a different bank. A number of tools were built into the e-assessment platform, including text-to-speech, a highlighting tool, and mindfulness activities to help students remain calm and focused. On the graphs, you'll see the Rainbow District School Board results appear in blue and the province in red. The Ministry of Education has set level 3, or 70% to 79%, as the provincial standard. In all slides referring to grade 3 and grade 6 results, you will note that there's no data available for 2014-15. This is the year that no EQAO assessments took place in English public boards across the province as part of a provincial job action at the time. Additionally, you'll note no data is available for 2019-20 and 2021 as the assessment was paused during the pandemic. 908 grade three students fully participated in the grade three assessment. In 2022-23, results in grade three reading were maintained at the board and provincial levels. Rainbow continues to be the highest achieving board within our region in this primary assessment. The use of best practices for reading instruction in all schools through a variety of initiatives, including our Lighthouse programs, consultant support, and ongoing professional learning are proving successful. Students are receiving daily reading instruction 
with an explicit focus on phonological awareness, phonics, and comprehension strategies. As you can see, our results are in alignment with the province. 72.2% of Rainbow District students achieved at the provincial standard or above, compared to 72.6% of students in the province. I will share with you today achievement data for all students with special education needs. This includes students with learning disabilities, autism, language and parents, physical disabilities, mild intellectual delays, developmental delays, and behavior identifications. It excludes students who are identified as gifted. As you can see in this slide, 50% of our students with special education needs in grade three achieved level three or higher in reading. This is 3% above the provincial average of 47%. We continue to work with our students with special education needs in increasing their achievement in reading through strong classroom practices, as well as through programs such as leveled literacy intervention and empower. This year we saw a 3% increase in achievement in grade three writing, while the province saw a change of 0.6%. Rainbow remains the top performing board in our region in this area. Prior to the new formatting of the assessment, sample test questions were shared by EQAO with school boards. This is no longer the case. However, Rainbow teachers provide rich writing opportunities for students as they develop their proficiency reflected in the improvement last year. We're proud of the progress our students are making and credit an ongoing focus on daily writing for the increased success in this area. Our grade three writing results for students with special education needs are 3% away from the provincial average. This is an area of need that we are addressing this year with a focus on not only increased daily writing practice, but also supporting increased fluency in our students' use of assistive technology. Assistive technology helps our students to become independent, it enhances their communication skills, and helps them to express their academic abilities. Nine hundred, sorry, 906 students participated in the primary assessment of mathematics. This year, we maintained our results in grade three, while the province showed a 1% increase. Rainbow remains a top performing board in Northern Ontario, this year ranking first in the geographic area when compared to all other boards. We continue to focus on providing students with high fidelity math instruction, supported by the work of our consultants, coaches, and coordinators in all grade levels. Twenty-five percent of our students, our grade three students with special education needs, achieved provincial standard. We are building upon our supports and intervention strategies for students with special education needs in mathematics. Last year, we were intentional in targeting our students with special education needs in and working with classroom staff to identify accommodations in their IEP that related to increased math achievement. We also worked with staff to identify strategies specific to the needs of our students to work towards closing the achievement gap for our students in math. We continue to do the same this year with our work in schools. 906 students participated in the junior assessment of reading. This year we saw a small increase in grade six reading achievement while the province saw a 1% decrease. This increase puts Rainbow almost directly in alignment with provincial results, with only a difference of 0.1% between board and provincial achievement. The board continues to offer responsive, tiered supports for students in support of reading achievement. We are excited to share our grade six achievement in reading for our students with special education needs. Reading results increased by 4% from the previous year, and we outperformed the province as well. 
We are happy with this increase and we continue to provide reading intervention in all schools, such as Empower, Remediation Plus, and Spell Read that we hope will continue to close gaps for our students that will result in increased student achievement. Nine hundred seven students participated in the junior assessment of writing. This year we saw a four percent decrease in grade six writing achievement, while the province saw no change. Daily writing remains a focus throughout the system. A well-organized and designed literacy block is key to ensuring student achievement and growth. With the support of our literacy coordinators and consultants, strong literacy instruction continues to be a priority throughout Rainbow Schools. We anticipate growth in this area as we implement strategies to strengthen literacy programming in the junior grades, including the introduction of two junior literacy lighthouse classes this year. Fifty-seven percent of our students with special education needs in grade six achieved provincial standard. As with our grade three writing, our grade six writing is an area of need that we are addressing with a focus on not only increased daily writing practice, but also supporting the increased fluency in our students' use of assistive technology. Nine hundred four students participated in the junior assessment of mathematics. This year we saw a 5% increase in junior math achievement, while the province saw a 3% increase. We're pleased that our efforts in mathematics are resulting in an upward trajectory. This year, 21% of our grade six students with special education needs achieved provincial standard. We celebrate, celebrate a 10% increase in achievement in this area from last year. We continue to support teachers in implementing accommodations and IEPs that will support increased achievement in math, as well as strategies that will support our students in the gains that they are making. Last academic year, 938 first time eligible grade 10 students fully participated in the grade 10 EQAO assessment. Our board saw a 2% dip in the percentage of students who met the standard. 77% of students were successful on the grade 10 literacy test. We plan to address this with targeted interventions from grade seven to nine. We continue to use the Fontes and Pinnell benchmark assessment system to identify the learning needs of students and support gap closing with leveled literacy intervention and empower reading programs targeting specific decoding and reading comprehension strategies. With the commitment to protected and structured reading time and daily writing in classrooms, we expect to make gains. As shared, 938 first time eligible grade 10 students fully participated in the grade 10 assessment. There were 262 students with special education needs participating in the OSSLT. Our board achieved a 56% success rate while the province achieved a 62% success rate. We are continuing to build on identifying skill gaps through the grade eight to nine transition meetings to ensure proper supports are in place for grades nine and 10. These supports include participation in courses that use intervention programs such as leveled literacy intervention and empower, which helps students improve specific decoding and or reading comprehension gaps. Additional support for students include assistance in the classroom and or with a resource period from the classroom teacher and resource teacher. Educational assistants also provide academic support to students with special needs. There were 939 students who participated in the grade nine EQAO mathematics assessment. We saw a 4% increase in students who met the provincial standard with a 44% rate for success, while the province saw a more modest 2% gain with a 54% success rate. It's evident 
provincially that it is challenging to meet the provincial standard in math. Rainbow is ranked second in the Northeast region in this area. For further context, 2022-23 was the second year that we have been teaching the new grade nine de-streamed math curriculum and the second year that the students used an online platform to complete the mathematics assessment. With school math action plans and math coaches who support the implementation of identified best practices, we expect to see an increase in achievement this year. Within the 939 students who fully participated in the grade nine EQAO math assessment, 215 of our students who participated had special education needs. Our board achieved a 20% success rate while the province achieved a 27% success rate. We are supporting our students, including those with special education needs throughout grades seven and eight by spiraling the math curriculum. This allows teachers to introduce math concepts to students and reteach them throughout the year with consistent opportunities for students to practice and consolidate their learning. By doing this, we are creating multiple opportunities to address misconceptions in math and develop fluency so that gaps are being closed. Rainbow District School Board can be proud of its overall EQAO results. We are the highest achieving English language boards in Northeastern Ontario, public and Catholic in grades three writing, reading, writing, and math, and in grades six, reading and math. This is a celebration. We would like to thank our classroom teachers and our school administrators. Their hard work created the conditions for gains in student achievement and we look forward to continued opportunities to improve professional practice. As always, our assessment results are, in, are used to enhance student learning, and we ask two very important questions as presented at the beginning of this presentation. How are we doing, and what can we do next to improve student learning? We are now pleased to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any questions for this presentation? Trustee Honda. Uh, thank you, Chair Klima. I always feel a little bit awkward because I don't really have a question, but I do have a comment. <laughs> I very rarely have a question. I often have a lot of comments. Um, I just want to say thank you. Thank you to all um, of the staff and all of you under your... Uh, under your leadership because uh, we hear so much right now about the challenges from COVID and you know how the province and of course the country, the world is struggling to make gains and to see that obviously we all wanna see more improvement but the fact that we have steadily improved and in many times, um, in many cases over the provincial um, assessment I think that that is something to celebrate and honestly that's all thanks to you so on behalf of myself I'm sure I speak for everyone on the board thank you all very very much and it just feels really good to know we're going in the right direction thank you any other questions <coughs> Trustee Farrell. thank you chair Clement um, wow 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 am I impressed Great job to all, all the folks that are here, but particularly all the schools and those uh, those teachers that are working so hard on a daily basis to uh, to um, increase these uh, these results. Um, I'm absolutely blown away about the special education numbers. Um, I think you've heard me say this before at this table. Good instructional practice for special needs kids is good instructional practice for kids in general. So when I see the reading scores going the way that they are, it's just Absolutely fantastic. Um, which leads me to a question. Um, in my years as principal, one of the things that used to drive me crazy was when we we had students that were not be were special needs students usually um, that would not be successful in EQAO. So we would have these long discussions about whether or not we would exempt them from the test or not. Um, those numbers used to be. Um, 
in, included in the results. Um, so I'm wondering if I could ask Danielle if she would just speak a little bit about if that's still the case. And um, um, yeah, I think that's where my question is. Yeah, go ahead. Um, thanks, Dave. Um, so those numbers are included. Those are comprehensive numbers that we shared today, for sure. But our practice in terms of students who are participating in EQAO, um, by whenever possible, all of our students that are accessing the Ontario curriculum, we want to make sure that they're participating in all aspects of provincial the provincial assessment. So I think that as a board, we do a really good job of making sure we're inclusive of all of our students with special education needs in their participation in the assessment. Thank you, Danielle. That's that's great to hear. Um, it's it's um, it's really amazing. I think it, what's really important for us all to understand that all students are included in that number. So if we are exempting students, you know, um, we still the, the, the results that we have are absolutely fantastic. So thank you for that once again. Appreciate all the work that you're doing, and that's it for my comments. Any other questions? Yeah. Trustee Nabasi. Thank you, Chair Clement. My question is the same question I had at this time last year in relation to the uh, First Nations data as it compares to other students within the board. Um, well, First Nations students uh, historically are at a disadvantage um, when it comes to their successes in, um, you know, reading, writing, uh, math. So I'm wondering if we've or are going to take uh, the time to review that data um, to look at um, the opportunities we have to better support students, especially students who are coming from feeder schools into Rainbow District School Board. Um, Rainbow District School Board then uh, resumes the responsibility of providing a, a good education to our First Nation Métis Inuit students. Um, so I, I guess my question is around that data, if that's a possibility to access that different points in time. I know it's not something the province um, likes to, uh, I guess, share publicly uh, because of the numbers. Um, so I'm wondering if Rainbow District School Board will be um, doing that. Thank you. Uh, Director, would you like to answer that? Yes, thank you, Chair Clement. And through you to Trustee Lebowski, it's a request we have made to the ministry. We certainly would uh, like the ministry to approve us sharing information that this time and when we do get that approval we will be very happy to share I will tell you though that we are very active in working through student success for all of our students and certainly for students who identify as indigenous and it is a priority area for us we have hired a curriculum coordinator to assist the indigenous education department we are reaching out um, to uh, to our education partners and we are trying very hard to make sure that all of our schools are aware of our learners who self-identify as indigenous to pay extra special attention to help uh, all of our students meet with uh, success and maximize their achievement and this is a priority in our years to come so my hope is that our request from the ministry will be granted and we'll be able to share some of our successes and also uh, some of our progress over over time as we implement our plans to uh, ensure all of our students are successful. Thank you, Director. Does that answer your question, uh, Trustee Dwesky? Yes, it does. Thank you very much. Any other questions on this topic? I see none. I would like to thank all the staff and all their hard work, and I ditto Trust Farrow's comments, this indeed is going in the right direction. Thank you very much to you all. Just a slight pause. Okay, now we go to old business. Previous minutes, we have a motion that the minutes of the special board meeting held Tuesday, September 22nd be approved. I need a mover, please. Trustee Hunda, a seconder, please. Trustee Lisa Corbier Addison. I'm getting there. Um, 
Any questions? Poll vote, Director. Trustee Clamont. In favor. Trustee Corby Rodgerson. In favor. Trustee DeBoske. In favor. Trustee Dewar. Trustee Farrell. In favor. Trustee Gibson. In favor. Trustee Hunda. In favor. Trustee Cosmerly. In favor. Student Trustee Green. In favor. Student Trustee Jacko Silink. In favor. Motion is carried. Thank you, Director. We have a second motion that the minutes of the regular board meeting held Tuesday, September 26th, 2023 be approved. I need a mover, please. Trustee Farrell. Seconder, please. Trustee Cosmerly. Any questions? I see none. Poll vote, Director. Trustee Clement. In favor. Trustee Corby Radisson. In favor. Trustee DeBoski. In favor. Trustee Dewar. Trustee Farrell. In favor. Trustee Gibson. In favor. Trustee Hunda. In favor. Trustee Cosmerly. In favor. Student Trustee Green. In favor. Student Trustee Jacko Silink. In favor. Motions carried. Thank you, Director. We go to number two, reports and recommendations from board committees. As you can see in your package, they're right there. New business, 2023-2024 school year. Director. Thank you, Chair Kalam, and good evening, trustees. I do welcome this opportunity to provide some updates as the school year progresses. I'd like to begin by thanking our school administrators, teachers, and support staff for going the extra mile this uh, startup to create warm and welcoming environments for the students in our collective care. As you know, creating positive school cultures where students feel safe and supported establishes a solid foundation for student success. We encourage staff to focus on connecting with students right from the start to set the tone for a great school year. Let me take an opportunity to highlight just a few of many examples. Sudbury Secondary School held its first ever multicultural fair on September 26, 2023. The entire school community gathered in the schoolyard and parking lot to take part in varied activities including karaoke, face painting, henna art, soccer, basketball games, musical performances, and dances. Students enjoyed a puzzle station generously supported by Future North and the school's BIPOC committee as a fashion show featured garments from different cultures as well as school spirit wear. Bulletin boards were decorated with flags representing diverse nationalities in the school population, and Sudbury Secondary School worked with local newcomers association to plan a memorable event for all students in a day that celebrated individuality and diversity, and they hoped to make the Multicultural Fair an annual event. LaSalle Secondary School held its third fall carnival on September 21st. Staff and students enjoyed the opportunity to build friendships and school spirit with good old-fashioned carnival activities. Grade 7 and 8 students participated in the activities in the morning, and grade 9 to 12 participated in the afternoon. There were many events, including carnival toss games, inflatable twister, face painting, barbecues, balloon animals, virtual game trailers, a dunk tank with staff volunteering to be part of that. Thank you very much for that. And a 137-foot obstacle course that was a course in accordance with OFIA guidelines. The carnival engaged all students from grade 7 to 12 and served its purpose of establishing a positive tone. The staff all played a role at the event, which helps build those caring connections, and most importantly, they had a lot of fun. Also in mid-September, Walden Public Schools grade one, two class and grade six class were hard at work tending to the lively community garden at Anderson Farm. Students harvested the last of the vegetables for the season, which were used to make a fall, fall harvest soup. Some of the produce was donated to the Walden Food Bank, and the cleanup crew did a fantastic job preparing the garden for winter. In keeping with environmental stewardship, students in grades one to three from Little Kern Public School participated in a special presentation with the Earth Rangers. A Canadian registered charity, Earth Rangers mobilizes children and families to take action for the protection of animals and the environment. As you can see, our schools continue to make environmental education and sustainability a priority in keeping with our strategic directions. This year, another group of 10 students is participating in Project Search at Health Sciences North, the international program that helps students who require additional support prepare
prepare for the world of work is in its second year in Greater Sudbury, thanks to the ongoing partnership with Rainbow District School Board, Health Sciences North, the City of Greater Sudbury, and the March of Dimes of Canada. Certificates of internship were presented to the second group of Project Search HSN participants during a signing ceremony at Health Sciences North on September 13. A transition to work program that combines classroom instruction with hands-on training, Project Search HSN experienced tremendous success in its inaugural year, and students in their final year of high school developed skills required for employment. As you know, it's been very well received, and there are hopes to expand the program in the coming years. In memory and legacy of the late Oris Sawchuk, it lives on at his alma mater thanks to a generous donation of his original artwork to Surrey Secondary School. A highly respected architect and artist, Oris Sawchuk attended Surrey's longest serving high school in the 1940s. Bridging the past with the present, visual arts students gathered in the school's foyer on September 28th to participate in the unveiling. The 11 by 16 painting of Elm Street circa 1949 depicts the Nickel Range Hotel, which is the title of the piece. Oris Sawchuk brought this to life using pen, ink, and watercolor. The result is a vibrant historical scene in bold yet muted colors that will stand the test of time. We thank Vicki Kahula for making the donation on behalf of the Sawchuk family. Meanwhile, Confederation Secondary School continued their work with the Greater Sudbury Police Service to pilot an all-terrain vehicle safety awareness program. Representatives from the Police Service visited Confederation on October 2nd to deliver the in-class component. And then a team of eight students in grade 12 hit the trails on their ATVs on October 5th for a 50 kilometer ride. Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry representatives provided education on conservation as well as an outdoor lunch. And the police performed safety demonstrations on site. Representatives from the Ontario Provincial Police, Snow Vehicle, All-Terrain Vehicle and Vessel Enforcement Division, which is called SAVE, were also in attendance. Teacher David Smart took students through a care and maintenance demonstration, and with ATVs continuing to gain in popularity, particularly in rural areas, there is certainly a need to focus on health and safety and to educate students on the safe and respectful way to drive their ATVs. I extend sincere thanks to the Greater Subway Police Service for their ongoing efforts in promoting trail safety to students with support of the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry and the Ontario Provincial Police. Incorporating hands-on component to the training makes it much more effective for students. Building awareness among young people will foster safe use, promote respectful riding, and hopefully prevent possible injuries or harm. This program can also serve as an optional certification for students in the Specialist High Skills Major program. Grade 11 and 12 students enrolled in the Specialist High Skills Major in Construction at Confederation spent the day at the Northern Construction Academy on October 6th. Students worked one-on-one -on -one with instructors to operate loaders, bulldozers, and excavators. And they also tested their skills using virtual simulators. After lunch, students heard from staff about viable career options in the construction and transportation industries. I had the pleasure and I appreciate the invitation of attending a pep rally on October 5th at Lockerbie Compton School to launch the Kids Caring for Kids Cancer Drive. The Cancer Drive directly supports pediatric, pediatric can uh, cancer care at the Shirley and Jim Fielding Northeast Cancer Center at Health Sciences North and helps keep our kids in need of care closer to home. Generations of students have been fundraising since the drive's inception in 1995. The event was renamed in memory of Laura Catesta in 1998 after the Lockerbie student um, had a battle with cancer. Students will be canvassing Greater Sudbury this Thursday, October 26th. Participating students will have a physical pledge forms as well as a, QR, as a QR code that will allow residents to donate directly to a custom Lockerbie Cancer Drive fundraising pan, uh, webpage. We encourage residents who are visited by Lockerbie students to give very generously to help support pediatric cancer care. If you're unable to give in person, please consider making a donation online. We'd also like to take this opportunity to remind all drivers to be extra attentive on the roads 
on Thursday, October 26th evening, because there will be increased foot traffic. This is again another terrific example of how schools build community. Rainbow District School Board welcomed guests from the Ontario Public School Boards Association October 12th. President Kathy Abraham and Executive Director Stephanie Va Donaldson visited Barrydown College, LaSalle Elementary School, and Cecil Facer Secondary School. Chair Bob Clement and Trustee Cosman Lee were happy to host along with our principals, Lorianne Lyle-Kantz of Barrydown College, who is pictured here, Jim Watchnuck of LaSalle Elementary, and Martin Punkery of Cecil Facer. I joined our guests at Barrydown College and was happy to see the seven grandfather teachings reflected in a work of art. As you know, these teachings form part of our values braided together with resilience, equity, and community. Some of our staff members attended the 25th anniversary of the Chicago McQuay Health Center on October 11th. The event was an evening of gratitude and unity that honored the past and embraced the future recognizing the resilience and strength of Indigenous communities and reaffirmed their commitment to the well-being of Indigenous people. New this year, schools were invited to participate in the fall fairs and they certainly rose to the occasion. Categories included Indigenous traditional craft, baking and cooking, vegetables, creative expression, flowers and plants, and teacher's choice in classroom. The school-based fairs culminated in the board's first traditional harvest celebration. Indigenous perspectives have been fundamental to our work in environmental education as we reaffirm our commitment to the value and care for our planet, Mother Earth, Chicago McQuay. This commitment was reflected in the many projects, very, very impressive projects that were completed. This was an opportunity to gain, uh, for school communities to gain a deeper understanding of our relationship with the land. A joint effort of the board's environmental ed committee and our indigenous education department had entries from school fall fairs that were showcased at the exhibition finale held on Friday, October 13th at Lockerbie. The day began with a sunrise ceremony and students had an opportunity to visit the many entries in the gym. There was a high level of interest among students who also enjoyed activities outdoors, including fresh fish scones, turtle teachings, art, among many others. I would extend a special thank you to the many members of our First Nation communities who shared their knowledge and their talents with our students that day and in the preparation for this day. This first ever event, led by Ryan Lafreniere and the Environmental Education Committee and our very own Hazel Fox Recollet and the Indigenous Education Department was a tremendous success. Congratulations to all, t uh, all participants. You certainly made us very proud. Gene Hansen Public School hosted a Fall Harvest Feast on October 19th. We appreciate the invitation. I have to say this uh, picture quality is either good or bad due to yours truly. I was honored to take the picture and I was very honored to be there that day. But many thanks to Trustee David Farrow and Superintendent Adam Gilbo and also Superintendent Kathy Watchnuck for being guest servers. The annual general meeting of the Parent Involvement Committee was held on October 17th. I would like to, like to thank the parents and guardians from Sudbury, Espinal, and Manitoulin who volunteered to join the committee. Following the AGM, we had the pleasure of hearing Dr. Jean Clinton from McMaster University. She is an infant, child, and adolescent psychiatrist who has researched the brain and how it affects behavior. That night, she had a powerful talk about the importance of face-to-face -face connections and relationships which is something we've been prioritizing this year and certainly last year. She reaffirmed for us that creating safe environments where students have a strong sense of belonging is fundamental to learning, growth, and brain development. Trustees, you will be very pleased to know that her messaging was so aligned with our vision, mission, and values and priorities that Dr. Clinton herself asked us for a copy of our strategic directions. This is certainly a tribute to this board of trustees because Dr. Jean Clinton travels extensively to engage with many groups from all sectors, from education to healthcare to childcare. I want to share with you a few key points that resonated with me. Dr. Clinton focused on the wisdom of the elders, which she called profound, and the seven grandfather teachings. 
She encouraged us to consider the interests of the next seven generations when decisions are made which are inherent in the Indigenous way of life. She asked us questions such as, are we thinking about the moment or creating a sustainable world? The need to belong is a fundamental human motivator, she shared, and relationships are the nutrient of brain development. Social ties are essential for optimal growth. She added that students need to feel safe physically and socially, emotionally, mentally, and spiritually. They also need to feel significant and situated, feeling valued, valued for their comp contributions, feeling competent, and feeling capable. We talk a lot about the greatest gift we give our students is confidence. We help our students have a clear purpose in life, have a sense of hope and direction, and offer some predictability and anticipation. Our children are going to be the change makers we need in the world. We need to cultivate an attitude of gratitude and bring back joy. We need to educate the heart as much as the mind. All of these messages are certainly reflected in our vision, mission, values, and priorities as we focus on reaching minds and touching hearts. At an earlier board meeting, I shared the Ministry of Education's Student Achievement Plan for all school boards in Ontario. The plan highlights indicators of success most indicators we're very familiar with, EQAO data in reading, writing, and math, and the Ontario Secondary School Literacy Test, credits earned, graduation rates, attendance, and suspensions. There are some new metrics that we are working on, compiling students who, one of them is, students who believe their learning has been preparing them for the next step of their experience, percentages of grade student, uh, students in grades six, nine, and 10, who are aware of mental health supports, and you've received many presentations from us over the last couple of years about our mental health team and mental health planning. And these templates are also here for us to standardize data and reporting practices across all schools in Ontario. This will provide a snapshot of student achievement overall. I also wanted to reemphasize, and this is some of the work of our ac academic team you saw tonight in our presentation, has revised our school improvement plan template to align with this student achievement plan. And it keeps with the provincial and our board priorities. You can see that the provincial priorities and squares align with our board priorities, which are in circles. There are some duplication in areas, but you'll see that we're very closely aligned. I would share that our plan was developed in ahead of receiving this, so we're very happy to see such a good alignment. Achievement of the learning outcomes and core academic skills are part of this. Preparation for, of students for future success, student engagement and well-being are all part of that plan. Our strategic directions is well positioned to continue to guide our path forward as we meet these three priorities prescribed by the ministry. The new school improvement plan template, which is on the screen, was the focus of our September 29th PA day. I'd like to commend our program team and our superintendents for creating a template that streamlines our work. The plan brings local and provincial priorities together with four headings, current status, goals, strategies, and check-ins and next steps. School administrators have been working very hard with their staff to determine strategies and meet the goals, and implementation is being discussed on a very consistent basis. As you know, we've restructured our executive council to be in schools on Wednesdays and Thursdays, and we are very pleased and amazed to see the wonderful work of our administrators, staff, and education support staff. In the areas of numeracy, the strategies are grouped into three categories. All schools are required to complete a math action plan with school level and classroom level strategies as well as measurable outcomes to address the three priority areas identified by the Ministry for Math. Those three priority areas for math from the Ministry are fidelity of implementation, content knowledge, ongoing learning, and relevant and responsive practice. The math action plan is embedded in our school improvement plan. As you know, literacy and numeracy is one of our priorities. Each school will have one document with priorities, goals, strategies, and measurable outcomes specific to their school. As I mentioned, the school improvement plan template was shared with staff on the PA day on September 29th. And on screen, you see other PA days to come. In keeping with the school improvement plan, staff engaged in activities to related to high yield instructional strategies. 
These cards which I have with me go almost everywhere I go. Uh, and I see them often in practice in schools and lesson planning and lesson implementation. And these strategies are learning goals, direct instruction, use of feedback, use of questioning, deliberate practice, reteaching as necessary, and some flexible groupings to allow for specific supports. As the staff moved from carousel to carousel, they reviewed a high yield strategy, completed an activity related to the strategy, and in times built a lesson plan and incorporates one of the strategies. At the end of the PA day, our educators had a full lesson plan that incorporated most of, if not all of the above. Our next PA day is Friday, November 10th, and we'll continue the conversation. Administrators will build on the high yield strategies as we continue to focus on what our program staff is calling all-star teams of strategies, adding success criteria to the list. It is important that our teachers clearly articulate the learning goals for each lesson and that students understand the objectives. Staff will use the learning goals to consider what the related success criteria might be and then discuss the success criteria that might support students in achieving that learning goal. Also on November 10th, grade seven and eight teachers will come together to focus on mental health and well-being. On that day, we'll be introducing our educators to modules created by School Mental Health Ontario that we're now required to teach. Our mental health lead, Sarah Jokinen, will be leading this with our team of school social workers. As you can see, trustees, we are being very purposeful in our professional learning as we continue to set high expectations for our students and staff. Our literacy and numeracy blocks are protected time, meaning we're dedicating that time to building those strong foundational skills. Our system-wide principals, consultants, and coordinators are working diligently to provide sustained support to our teachers. And effective instruction, as you know, has a tremendous impact on student achievement. Students in grades seven and eight and their parents and guardians are invited to an interactive information session designed to help students make key decisions in the transition from elementary to secondary school. Next stop, grade nine, will be held on Tuesday, November 14th from 7 to 8.30 at Cambrian College in the Student Center. The following topics will be discussed. How to read timetables, how to ease into new school environments, what resources are available, what courses to select, and skills students need to be successful, along with many helpful tips. All this inf information is included in a document that you see on your screen that will be distributed at the session. Information will be provided for all pathways, independent living, work, apprenticeship, college, and university. And all participants will be able to tour booths and speak with our staff. I began my update with a focus on building community. I'd like to end my update with a few more examples. Phase one of the Lowell Park tennis and basketball court revitalization was unveiled this fall thanks to a collaborative effort from the Lowell Park Neighborhood Association Sudbury Community Foundation, and the City of Greater Sudbury. The vision is to create a welcoming space where students, families, and the community can stay active and have fun year round. We extend sincere thanks to all three organizations for bringing this exciting project to life. This year, Rainbow District School Board received a Terry Fox Milestone Award for having raised $1 million for cancer research. The award is a tribute to students, staff, and the community members, past and present, who have participated in the Terry Fox Run for many years. Thanks and congratulations to all. Terry Fox Runs were held across Rainbow Schools this fall. On Friday, September 22nd, Northeastern Elementary School classes were assigned a color to create a rainbow of support on the school track. Northeastern staff and students raised 3670 dollars this year. It's great to see staff and students come together each school year for such a worthwhile cause. Valley View Public School also had a lot of fun. As some of you know, Principal Brenda Carr is always a good sport and was up for a challenge. If you're looking at the screen in case it's hard to read, <laughs> teachers eventually had karaoke and if they raised $3,250, um, 
they could duct tape the principal to the wall. The school far surpassed this target as evident by the visuals. <laughs> uh, we all know that these fun moments build memories that students will never forget in school, and staff for that matter as well. And yes, they create a strong sense of belonging that is fundamental to student well-being and achievement. Trustees, there are so many more examples, and I apologize that I can't share them all, but I do want to thank you for the opportunity to provide a brief update. And I'd be pleased to answer any questions or receive any comments you may have. Any questions or comments for the director on his presentation? Trustee Honda. <laughs> thank you, Chair Kumar. No question, just a comment. I absolutely love these reports. Thank you. Like, honestly, I can walk away and my heart feels good. <laughs> Obviously, academics is our prime, our prime focus, but when I see the all-around care in both um, mental and physical and the happiness that our students are experiencing, through your efforts, through the efforts of admin council, and certainly our staff. It just um, makes me so proud that we're moving in the right direction, and I just, I just love to hear all these recaps. And for anybody interested, Facebook covers a lot of this. It's just thrilling to see it, uh, staff and students and parents that are so proud of these efforts and, uh, and post them. So I want to thank you again for your presentation. Thank you, Trustee Honda. Anybody else have any comments? I see none. Uh, thank you, Director. Um, like you said, this scratches the surface. There are so much going on in our schools that we have to be proud of. And if uh, you have the chance, go to your schools, visit your schools, and you'll see what's going on. Thanks, sir. Um, we go to now number two, Superintendent Gilbo, OSP refund. Thank you, Chair Clement. This year's premium refund is valued at $32,393.52, as is detailed in the documents provided as part of your package. In prior years, this refund was applied as an offset against premium costs. However, similar to last year, we are reinvesting these funds as part of our continued efforts to enhance network security addressing key areas of improvement as identified by OSBE's cyber analysis. Our IS staff remains engaged in these efforts based on the roadmap established jointly by OSBE and ourselves. Thank you very much. Now we go to number three, Trustee Gilmo, Honoraria for Trustees 2023-2024. Thank you, Chair Kwan. You'll find the backup for these calcula uh, calculations as well in the package provided. You will note a slight increase in the amounts for the upcoming term, which begins November 15th, based on an increase in the enrollment component. You will see that the base component remains unchanged. Thank you very much. Number four, trustee exp expenditures 2022-2023. Superintendent Gilbo. Thank you, Chair Kamal, once again. You will find this report in the package provided. This report follows the same format as previous years, outlining expenses for the 2022-23 fiscal year. Of note, the $29,492 spent on conferences include the costs associated with trustees attending both the Public Education Symposium as well as the OPSPA AGM. In addition to student trustees attending the Ontario Student Trustees Association conferences and AGM, which included both our incoming and outgoing student trustees in the spring. The total cost of $138,501 is only slightly above the allocated amount of $135,508 at revised budget under the GSNs. Thank you very much. Notice of absence, we have none. Director's remarks. Thank you, Chair Clamont. I will be brief, but I will follow the lead of uh, Dr. Jean Clinton and this month express and share an attitude of gratitude to all of our school office staff. The start of the school year, as many of you know, is a very extra busy time of year, and we're very grateful for the tireless efforts of our school office staff to support students, staff, parents, and guardians, and ensure a smooth start to the school year. 
I'd also like to take a moment to thank our incredible school administrative teams. You saw many evidence of, of their success, not only academically tonight, but also in terms of the community they build and the, the culture they build in their schools. And I would like you to all know that our administrators are working tirelessly to make their schools great places to learn. So many thanks to them. And finally, I'd like to thank all of you, our board of trustees, for your ongoing support and leadership. It is essential for our continued efforts to support our students and staff. You can see we're moving forward with our priorities thanks to your leadership and stewardship, your positive energy, teamwork, focus on students and commitment to student achievement is vital to our success and so greatly appreciated. I'll conclude by saying thank you to all of our staff for their continued efforts to be difference makers in the lives of our students. We're very grateful for the incredible work our staff does each day. Thank you. Thank you, Director. Now we go to our other director, OSPA Director, um, Trustee Cosmoney. Thank you. A uh, couple of things. Uh, a new central agreement has been ratified by all parties with respect to ETFO education workers. These staff are represented in 13 school boards in Ontario, including ours. Uh, secondly, I, I know Director Bourget has already spoken to it, but just to talk about it again, OPSPA President Kathy Abraham and OPSPA Executive Director Stephanie Donaldson paid a visit to Rainbow Schools on October the 12th. Chair Clement and I had the privilege of taking them to several of our schools. We visited Berry Down College, the new LaSalle Elementary School, the Lancer Dome, and Cecil Facer Secondary School. Our visitors were very impressed by what they saw, and I want to thank Director Bourget, Nicole Charette, and the principals, staff, and students of these schools for making the visits memorable. Uh, next, the, uh, on t the Northern OPSPA conference was held in Sault Ste. Marie on October 13th and 14th. We had an incredible day and a half. And the agenda was excellent and the conference was a great opportunity for the Rainbow Trustees who attended to meet other trustees from across the North. Several items were discussed at the Northern Directors meeting that I would like to share with you now. First, OPSPA plans to talk to the province about transportation funding as all boards are deficiting in this area. They also plan to talk to them about special incident portion or SIP funding for students with complex care needs. Many boards are expressing concerns about possible changes to the funding formula. Secondly, OPSPA believes the government will be releasing a consultation shortly on trustee code of conduct, so stay tuned for that. And finally, while our enrollment numbers seem to be increasing, boards in Northwestern Ontario are struggling with declining enrollment. Several of these boards have huge geographies, but total enrollments of under 5,000 students. The next OPSPA Board of Directors meeting is on November 26th in Toronto, followed by our Advocacy Day at Queen's Park on November 27th. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Cosmoly. Now we get to trustees' remarks or questions. Any trustee? Don't, where are we? This one? Sorry. Student trustees, we'd like to hear from you. Thank you. Uh, so I will give a uh, brief update of what we've been doing in Senate as well as uh, a school initiative that we passed. Um, so to start, we an initiative that was expressed by many of the members um, on Student Senate is that we wanted to do a Halloween for Hunger campaign this year. Um, this has, from my knowledge, gone pretty smoothly, uh, but it's not going to be completed until uh, October 31st. Um, this is a campaign um, food drive where we collect uh, canned goods uh, and other foods and then we donate it to um, uh, food banks around the city. Um, one problem that did arise uh, in Sudbury Secondary School is uh, when we ran it last year, uh, many of the students took, or how we run it, is uh, food donations come in for our um, haunted hallway, uh, which is an annual thing that we do. And the problem came that students were taking food from our value vault and then re-donating it back to the school, um, which, yeah. Um, and so <laughs> this year, instead, we're only collecting money, which will then go um, into buying food for our value vault. Um, but overall, it went very well. 
Uh, next, I'll talk about uh, the High School 101 uh, slideshow presentation. Uh, this is a um, slideshow that will help uh, incoming students about uh, just helping them out with high school. Uh, so the different sections that we discuss are time management, um, how to use your email, asking for help, volunteer opportunities, post-secondary options, graduation requirements, and for school-specific um, categories, we talk about uh, special courses that are offered, programs that are offered, clubs, sports, academic help, student support, the bell schedule, a map of the school, uh, contact information for the principals and vice principals, um, indigenous student resources, and an introduction of all of our student senators that the students can contact if they need to discuss anything. Uh, if you have any questions or suggestions about this, I would be happy to hear them. Thank you. And Sonia will talk about uh, what we did at OSTA. Any, any questions for Trustee Green? Yes, go ahead. OSTA ICO is a conference that Trustee Green and I have attended this past weekend. It was a wonderful learning experience and a great opportunity for networking. We had many guest speakers. I say many, but really it was just like two. Um, we had uh, the Minister of Education up here and gave a little keynote um, speech, I guess. Uh, th there, were, um, there were good workshops, such as Interactive History of Indigenous Peoples, of which I attended. Um, also, in improving skills for social media, public, public speaking, and learning about our legal rights and privileges as student trustees, 55-7. We were also introduced to AIGs, advocacy interest groups, um, some of which being Truth and Reconciliation and Mental Health. I personally am a part of the Truth and Reconciliation one. Um, there is also an ISTC, Indigenous Student Trustee, um, council, and lately we have been planning for upcoming elections for the for the incomings taking over the outgoing positions. Um, I know it was short and sweet, but I learned that in my public speaking. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. If it was up to me, I almost I almost didn't let you speak. <laughs> so uh, this is the for sure. These are the kind of comments we want for sure to hear from you and your comments. Yes, Trustee Green. Um, something to add about the AIGs. I joined the um, Equity, Diversity, and Inclusion. Um, and in that, we hope to bring uh, report systems to the school boards around the province, uh, which is a really exciting initiative um, that you guys will be hearing more of. Thank you very much. Any questions for our trustees, student trustees? Go ahead. I have one more thing to add. Um, for the Truth and Reconciliation um, AIG, uh, we are hoping to not change the school curriculum, but just incorporate more of the history and allow kids that knowledge of um, Indigenous people's history. Thank you very much. Any questions? Trustee Honda. I object to your attitude. <laughs> I just want to tell these guys that I'm really proud of you. This is, uh, you're, you're very, very new, and uh, it makes my heart proud that uh, th this is a big thing. You go to a big conference in the big city, and uh, we've always been very, very privileged that our, our trustees have represented us well, and I'm very proud that the two of you seem to be continuing to do that, and you both did very good in presenting to the board. Thank you very much. Trustee uh, uh, Addison. Just one comment. Further to um, <coughs> Trustee Cosmerly's uh, comments about the Northern Regional Conference, there was a wonderful trades trailer at that conference, which was a, a pilot project that was set up by the Algoma School Board, and it, it was basically a trailer with all the trades incorporated into it that um, went to elementary schools. So they toured into grade six, seven, and eight classes to in, 
five, six, seven, and eight to entice students to, to, to go into pathways in the trades. And they were interactive. It was a really well displayed trailer, one that our board would benefit in a program like that. And I just wanted to bring it to the board's attention. I don't know if there's any money for pilot projects, but Mar um, Maureen? Uh, this is in the works. I just wanted to share that with you. Yes, program team is uh, working on that and through our high school's major. Awesome. Through construction and manufacturing, yeah, it is in the works. Awesome, I shared the ideas with, with um, uh, Paul Best at Manitoulin Secondary School and, and he was very happy to, to see it, but I'll have to share with him that it's in the works at our board. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anyone else? I'm getting there. <laughs> now, now we're into trust. Now we're into trustees' remarks. Go ahead. I just wanted to thank the the seven candidates who put their names in for consideration for the trustee vacancy. Um, it takes a lot of courage to put your name in. Uh, we had excellent, excellent uh, candidates, uh, and I want to publicly thank them. I thank them when I spoke to them on the phone, but I want to thank them publicly for, for putting their names in. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I totally agree. It takes courage to come forward and put your name forward. Anybody else? Trustee Farrell. Just a couple of quick comments, Chair. Uh, first of all, just to echo what the Director said earlier, I was really honoured to be able to serve um, Fall Harvest Feast dinner at uh, Jean Hanson Public School last week. Um, once again, just a, a remarkable school, fantastic group of s staff uh, and students, and uh, if you get a chance to go and visit Jean Hanson Public School, you should. It's really a sp very special place. Last thing I wanted to say is I wanted to say thank uh, Trustee Cosmerly as well as Chair Clement for inviting me to lunch with uh, Kathy Abraham and Stephanie Donaldson. Um, it was a very wonderful uh, uh, lunch that we had and I uh, got a chance to know some people that are real movers and shakers in this province. So thank you publicly for inviting me. I appreciate that very much. You're welcome. Um, any other comments? Yes. <laughs> Tabasigi. Thank you, Chair Clement. Um, I was thinking about what our director had shared in relation to what he learned from uh, Dr. Jean Clinton's remarks, and I think I would be remiss in, uh, in, in, in addition to the, the positive feedback for the EQAO uh, results. Um, I, I would like to extend an acknowledgement to our families who also support our students. Um, we all know and understand that uh, at-home learning is, is critical to, to children's learning and development. And I'd also like to acknowledge, uh, you know, our parents, our guardians, our aunties, our uncles, grandparents, and also helping to support um, the students at home, which allows Rainbow to take this huge leadership role across the province, I think, in our, in our results collectively. So I just wanted to also acknowledge our families um, and their support uh, to our students. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other trustees? Yes, sir. Trustee Green. Um, so this past weekend, there was a protest called the Million Man March that was held in Sudbury. Um, the purpose of these protests is to take queer and trans education out of schools entirely. I, w I wasn't able to attend this protest because I was at OSTA, um, but many of my friends were, uh, and I was able to attend the one on September 22nd. I skipped school to attend this protest, as did many of my friends, and at this protest I got called many very hurtful names. I was tripped, and I was even hit in the face. During the protest, the protesters circled Sudbury Secondary School, and they were. Uh, uh, this is a school that many of the population self-identify as trans and non-binary. These students looked out their window during their period three and four classroom to see signs with misinformation and hate speech. As well, they had people on a megaphone saying things that I don't think I can share in front of you all right now. But the students of Sudbury Secondary School had to hear that. After I returned to school that day, I could feel the life having been drained from school. 
A sadness from, when, from what had taken place that day was shared between every single student. Since that day, several days a week, we've had people standing on the sidewalk outside of our schools with the same kind of signs, with the same harmful messages. This is not okay. The mental health of our trans and non-binary students at this time is at an all-time low. Many of us are scared that we aren't going to be re uh, respected by our teachers, our administrative staff, and our families. A fear that laws are going to be passed similar to the ones that we see in Florida is also shared. It is more important now than ever to be there and to support our trans learners. Thank you. Thank you very much. Comments? I have one. Our, our schools are designed to be inclusive and to be safe. And that'll never change for our board. So you can be safe knowing that our staff and everybody are behind you 100%. Any other comments? I see none. The chair has a few words. I had the pleasure last week of meeting with some of the newest members of the Parent Involvement Committee, the Annual General Committee, was followed by the presentation on belonging and connection with Dr. Jean Clinton. And uh, I echo the words of our director when she's asking us about our programs and what we put together means a lot for our board. I would like to thank all parents and guardians who were there in Sudbury, Espanola, and Manitoulin. Parents' involvement improves student achievement. Earlier today, some 75 students from Rainbow Schools in grade 9 and 12 participated in the Headstrong Summit at Cambrian College. Students learned how to recognize the signs of mental health and reduce stigma. Students were also inspired to become leaders to foster wellness in their own schools. Grade 9 students in Rainbow Schools will spend the day at work shadowing a parent, relative, friend, or volunteer host on Wednesday. November 1st, as part of Take Our Kids to Work. Now in its 29th year, the national program gives students the opportunity to experience the world of work as they begin to explore possible career paths. Staff and students in Rainbow Schools will continue to learn about treaties, relationships during Treaty Recognition Week from November 5th to the 11th. Educational activities and lessons are part of Rainbow School Board's continuing focus on truth and reconciliation. Rainbow District School Board invites students and staff to go to Paperless in support of World Paper Free Day on Monday, November the 6th. For the challenge, schools will create 21st century paperless classrooms by avoiding the use of printers, photocopiers, hard copy re uh, reading material, and paper-based assignments for the day. All Rainbow Schools will observe Remembrance Day, the week of Monday, November the 6th. We also encourage students and staff to encourage in community events on Saturday, November the 11th. Flags will fly at half mass in Sudbury, Espanola, Manitoulin. From Wednesday, November the 8th, to mark Indigenous Veterans Day throughout the week. There will be no school for students on Friday, November 10th for Professional Activity Day. We remind parents, guardians, that information about professional learning is posted on our Rainbow website. Parents, guardians, and students in grades 7 and 8 are invited to mark their calendars for next stop, grade 9 on November the 14th. The information session will focus on the changes and choices students face while entering high school. This is an evening presentation in the Student Center at Cameron College. Students Secondary School will present The Little Mermaid Junior for the public on November 19th at 1 p.m. and November 24th, 25th at 6.30 p.m. Tickets are $20 for adults and $10 for youth under 12 years old and can be purchased at the door or in advance through showpass.com. Uh, when we were in the Sioux, uh, I met uh, our former superintendent, Leslie Dye, uh, who was there. She's the director for um, Timmins. And uh, the card you see here in front of you is a card that she made and presented to us in thanking us for our donations to Scouts Canada and in, in honor of her dad who just passed away a couple of months ago. 
And now I'll leave you with a quote from Vince Lombardi who said, the only place success comes before work is in the dictionary. Thank you all. You have there under G, information and proposals, reports from officials and staff, tender requests and proposals, none, non-staff communications, September 12th, letter of sympathy from OPSPA. You have that in your package. I want to thank them for that. Future meetings, Special Education Advisory Committee, November 1st, 1130, and Student Senate, November the 6th. Student Planning Committee, Environment Education, Equity and Inclusion, First Nations Advisory Committee, board meetings, the dates are all there. Please put those in your uh, calendar. Now we have adjournment. I need a motion, so we now adjourn. Nobody wants to leave. Trust to Cosmerly. We are now.